um, as promised, I'm going to give this example of a combustion analysis problem. Um, the previous one that I did in class, um, which didn't work out, I re-examined it and I realized that it is full of errors. Um, so I decided to ditch that one and do this one. I worked this one out already. So this one should give us a more reasonable answer. So let me just do a full screen thing here. So basically they gave you the mass of the compound, right? And it says that the, qu the question says that it contains only carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. It's burnt in excess, in excess oxygen. And the products of course would be carbon dioxide and water. And these are the amounts of each of those substances. Um, so the question also continued to give some more information about the compound. It says that the molar mass were determined by an independent process called mass spectrometry. And it turns out that the molar mass based on that method is equal to 90 grams per mole. So the question is asking for you to, based on all the information provided previously, to determine the empirical and molecular formulas for, um, for that compound, all right? So the first step in this um, process is that I'm going to take the uh, mass of the carbon dioxide. So that would be one. That's this mass right here. So that's 1.285 grams of carbon dioxide. And I'm going to convert that to moles. So to do that, we multiply by this conversion factor where we have one mole of CO2 below or above, I should say, and the molar mass down here, which is 44. 0 0.01 grams of CO2. The next step would be the mole ratio between the carbon dioxide and the carbon. Based on a formula, one mole of carbon dioxide will contain one mole of carbon. All right. And then the next conversion factor is where we convert from moles to grams. And um, based on um, what we know about the molar mass of carbon, um, you're going to have one mole of carbon down here. And the molar mass of carbon above, which you can get from the periodic table, which is 12.01 grams of carbon. So these are the units that will cancel out. And when I did the calculation here, the answer I got is 0 0.3507 grams of carbon. All right. So that takes care of the mass of carbon. Now, the next step is to get the mass of oxygen. And um, of course, to do that, we have to start off with the mass of H2O, which is 0.65. I'm sorry, the mass of hydrogen, not oxygen. That's what we're determining now. So the mass of water is given here. That's what we're going to start off with here, 0.658 grams of H2O. We're going to convert that to moles, one mole of H2O down here. Down here, we're going to have 22 what am I saying? 18.02 grams of H2O, which would be the molar mass. So this will cancel out with this. And then the next step, which if you recall in the examples that I have worked out, I always stress that you need to remember that here, the ratio of the moles of water to the moles of hydrogen is one mole of H2O down here and two moles of hydrogen above. So that this unit will cancel out with this. And then the next step is where we look at the molar mass of hydrogen, which is 1.008 grams. That would go up top over one mole of hydrogen, which would go below. That would go with that. And when I did this calculation, I got 0 0.07361 grams of hydrogen. Okay, so we have the masses of the carbon and hydrogen. Remember the question says that there are three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So what I would do here is find the mass of the oxygen. And the way I would do that, that would be the difference between the total mass of the compound, which is 0 0.658 grams minus the mass of the two compounds or the two elements, um, carbon and hydrogen, which is 0 0.3507 grams plus 0 0.0. 7361 grams and when I worked that out the answer I got is 0 0.2 0 0.2334 grams all right so now we have determined the masses of the three elements
carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So the next step I'm going to proceed with in a new slide. And this is where we're gonna set up our table so that we can eventually get the empirical formula. So um, let me go to full screen. So I'm gonna set a table, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen at the top. And then I will start off with the masses. So the masses we calculated from the previous part, the mass of carbon is 0 0.3507 grams. The mass of hydrogen is 0 0.07361 grams. And the mass of oxygen is 0 0.2334 grams, all right? So those are the masses. So the next step, if you recall, we are to determine the moles of each element in this case. And of course, we do that by dividing each of them by their respective molar masses. So 0 0.3507 grams, we're going to multiply by 1 mole over 12.01 grams. In the case of hydrogen, it's 0 0.07361 grams, multiplied by 1 mole over 1.008 grams. And then finally here, 0.2334 grams, we're going to multiply by one mole over 16.00 grams. And when I worked these out, um, for the first one, I got 0 0.02920 moles. In the case of hydrogen, I got 0 0.7303 moles. And finally, in the case of um, oxygen, I got 0 0.01459 moles, all right? So the next step, if you recall, again, from our previous examples that we looked at, the next step is to examine these three mole values and determine which one is lowest. That would be this one. And we divide each of these by that value. So we're going to divide right through by 0 0.014559 moles. And when I did that calculation, this is what I got. For carbon, I got 2.001. For hydrogen, I got 0, I'm sorry, 5.001. And in the case of this, this would be it um, divided by itself. So, um, so that will give you one right here. And you'll notice that these numbers are very close to integers. So we can approximate this to two, approximate this to five, and that will be one. So therefore the empirical formula is gonna be C2H5O. So that's the empirical formula. So we have answered part of the question, but we need to step, take a step further and determine the molecular formula. So how do we determine that? Well, what we need to do is find the empirical mass, which would be the sum of the molar masses of all the elements in that formula. So when I did that, I got the empirical mass to be equal to 45.06 grams per mole. And then I find what is known as the integral factor. The integral factor is basically the molar mass divided by the empirical mass. So the molar mass is given in the question as 90 grams per mole. The empirical mass is 45.05 grams per mole. So when I did this calculation, I find that this is approximately equal to two. So therefore the molecular formula would be equal to the empirical formula C2H5O multiplied by the integral factor, which is two. So this becomes C4H10O2. So this here that I'm circling is the empirical formula, all right? So that's basically how this example is done. All right, so um, I just thought it was important that I showed you how to do such an example because of course you could be faced with one of these in your future exam, all right? All right, so that's it for this video.